Joining me is Energy Committee member and Homeland Security Committee member, Oklahoma Republican Senator James Lankford. Nice to see you, Senator. Thank you for joining me. You bet. Good to see you again, Greta. Senator, I don't know which to go, which is to, to go to first. Um, we got back home, we have the tax holiday, and then we've got the problem with China in Taipei. So let me first, uh, let, let's talk about the, uh, the president's uh, idea to have a tax holiday on the gas tax. 18 cents, is that going to make much of a difference in people's pocketbooks? Unfortunately, that doesn't make near the difference that we need to really make in this. Uh, literally, gas prices have gone up $3, and President uh, Biden's answer is to try to drop off 18 cents for three months in that. Uh, you got to remember, this is the latest in a long series of his ideas. If you go back five months ago, it was he's going to increase ethanol, and that was going to bring down price. And then it was going to be he's going to increase uh, a million barrels a day to release from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. That was going to bring down price. Two weeks ago, it was he was going to drop the tariffs on solar panels coming in from the from Asia uh, to come to the United States to deal with energy prices. And now it's, I'm going to drop 18 cents off on the gas tax, raise our national debt uh, by billions of dollars in the process, and try to be able to drop this off leading up into the election. Uh, that, that's not going to solve it. Uh, what we really need to have is greater supply. I mean, this is not hard. Supply and demand. The more the president puts restrictions on building new pipelines, permits for new federal lands and waters, uh, the harder he makes it to be able to go get supply, the more demand that we have, the prices begin to rise right now especially natural gas uh, we have plenty of natural gas in the united states but we have a shortage of pipelines we have to build more pipelines to actually move that to be able to bring the price down so this is basic economics and basic infrastructure all right basic economics how long can the american people reasonably expect that the price is going to be hovering around five dollars a gallon um, if, if we were to if we were to implement even everything that you suggest or that that your party thinks is the solution how fast before we could get those prices down the, the fastest it could happen would be months to years at this point. And it could come down to $4. It could come down to 3 and a half as we begin to increase supply. But you've got to increase supply to be able to offset this. The other challenge that we have is overseas manufacturing of our uh, refineries. Uh, we had three refineries closed down during the time of COVID. Uh, so we've had some of that refinery capacity move offshore. We've got to bring them back on. That's years to be done. Quite frankly, environmental restrictions have prevented new refineries being built in the United States since 1977. Uh, so this is not a new issue, but it is one that we have to aggressively address. Still 98% of the vehicles on the road use oil and gas. They aren't electric vehicles. So this is the vast majority of Americans. All right, let me turn now to uh, Beijing and Taipei. Um, it does seem that, uh, you know, that the uh, tension is growing in that area. Uh, what, what do you see as the U.S. policy or what should be the U.S. policy vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan in the event that uh, China does invade Taiwan? We've been very clear to be able to supply Taiwan with what it needs to be able to defend itself and to be able to walk alongside of them. We have our warships in the area as well. Uh, we, the F-16s that we manufacture are in Taiwan right now. A lot of their military equipment is, is American military equipment. We've had a close relationship, both a trade relationship and a military relationship uh, with Taiwan for decades and decades. So uh, this is an area that uh, China's continuing to be able to elevate. They're basically trying to do to Taiwan what they did to Hong Kong uh, when China broke its word to the world uh, that it was going to allow Hong Kong to be autonomous. And then they slowly intimidated them into capitulation and then went over and took uh, Hong Kong entirely. They're trying to do the same thing to Taiwan right now. But the people of Taiwan continue to be able to hold strong and say they do not want to be under Beijing's thumb. I don't blame them. You know, when you, but when you look at uh, Ukraine and Russia, is that we don't we don't have boots on the ground, and, and right. no, and most Americans don't want boots on the ground there. And now, now we see that Russia is, and we supplied weapons, but now Russia is is gaining much in the east. If we now look over to the Taiwan and and China situation, and we talk about supplying them with weapons and everything, do you really do you really believe that should China invade Taiwan, that are simply supplying Taiwan um, Taiwan with weapons and support like we have in Ukraine? that that is enough for Taiwan to hold off China? We will find out in the days ahead, hopefully never, if I can say it that way, because the, the issue with Beijing and, tai, and Taiwan is very different than it is with Russia and Ukraine because the much larger economy, uh, much more lethal fighting force in China than there is with Russia. Uh, it is a very different dynamic on it, as well as economically. We've cut off a lot of the uh, interactions with the United States and Russia, uh, but cutting off with China is a very different issue. But that would definitely be done. 
Uh, we watched uh, China threaten uh, Australia, and when Australia responded back economically and made some very public, strong statements about Hong Kong, China just cut off Australia in that. Well, Australia has responded over the past several years of diversifying its economy. I've been a big advocate of we've got to diversify our economy away from uh, a communist government in China, not knowing what they're going to do. If we're intimately connected with them, China will use that as leverage to say, if you come to Taiwan's defense, if you aid them at any point, then we're going to cut off and collapse the American economy. We should pay attention to a communist government when they do things like we know they're going to do. Well, and of course, we've also got the problem is that Taiwan has the gold, the uh, high tech chip that That's right. both that China wants, that we want, and that Taiwan produces most of in the world. And we can't get up and running fast enough to manufacture our own. And they're virtually every product we have here in the United States. So there's a huge economic interest for us. That is correct. So the, the chip manufacturing is coming to the United States. In fact, Taiwan is trying to move some of their manufacturing into Arizona. Intel is expanding into a large facility in Ohio. There's a lot of expansion right now, but that takes years to be able to get up to speed. It's a very expensive uh, process. Uh, and it takes time to be able to get that ramped up. But Taiwan is the location for that. If you think it's hard to buy a car or any kind of piece of electronics right now, uh, if China invaded Taiwan and shut off that supply entirely, it would be catastrophic for our economy. We cannot be dependent on one other nation's economy to be able to survive. Quickly, you up or down, yes or no on the uh, gun bill? I'm a no on this. Uh, quite frankly, we're still going through it. Uh, they put it out last night at uh, 6.15 and then had the first vote on it at 7.30. Uh, that's typical Senate Schumer at this point. And uh, so we're still going through all the details on it, but I've got some major checks in it. Senator, thank you very much for joining me, sir. You bet. It's good to see you again. Nice to see you.